Hi everyone, this is Heidi from My Reading Life. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here tonight to film uh, the promised video, the My Neck of the Woods tag, which is sort of like my celebration of reaching 1,000 subscribers on my channel. So I thought I would tell you a little bit more about my uh, where I'm from as a way for you to get to know me better. The My Neck of the Woods tag was um, created by Books I'm Not Reading, um, and I will link her channel down below. She was the original creator of the tag, and it's super fun. And so the tag basically is just to tell people a little bit more about where you live, and um, you can sort of determine how big of an area that you would like to talk about, and uh, then talk about some authors from uh, that area. So I'm going to be talking about Maine. Um, I live in Eastern Maine, in Washington County, Maine, which is by some accounts, the poorest county in Maine. It is a rural county. Um, and we only have about 15,000 people that live in the entire county. So I have a map here and I'm gonna turn you around and get you closer to this map. So oh, this map shows you um, sort of the area where I live. It's the easternmost part of Maine and it is um, on the border with Canada. So you can see here, this is Canada. This is Campbell Island and the border runs in between the mainland um, of Maine and the Canadian border, these islands, Campobello and then Deer Island up here are Canadian. And in my old job, not my current job, I used to be able to look out my office window and see those islands. So that was pretty cool. Um, this is Cobbs Cook Bay here. And Cobbs Cook Bay is a, a word, Cobbs Cook is a word that comes from the Passamaquoddy, which is, Passamaquoddy is a Native American tribe that's from this area and still lives on a reservation in this area, two reservations actually, but one that fronts on Cobbs Cook Bay. And Cobbs Cook is a Passamaquoddy word that means boiling tides. Passamaquoddy itself means the people who spear Pollock sort of loosely um, in English. And that was because of the great amounts of the fish, the pollock, um, that were in these waters and was one of the reasons why the Passamaquoddy would come to the shores of Copscook and Passamaquoddy Bay in order to spear them um, for in their summer camps. So that's where I'm located and that's where I get my Twitter handle. The first author I'd like to talk about is a children's book author and that's Robert McClowski. Robert McClowski actually wasn't born in Maine he was born in New, uh, he was born in Ohio, excuse me. Uh, I have some notes down here, so I might peek down there every once in a while. But he was born in Ohio and moved to Maine when he was an adult to raise his family. Um, you may know him for his book, um, Make Way for Ducklings, which is a story that takes place in Boston. But his breakout book about Maine was Blueberries for Sal. This is actually my copy of the book that I received for my birthday when I was two years old. Um, and my mom's been holding on to it for me. But it has these lovely illustrations. And it's all about a little girl who goes blueberry picking with her mom. And her mom is, you know, focused on picking berries. And the little girl finds some animal friends. Because the bears are also blueberry picking. And so the little girl and the baby bear sort of come face to face with each other. And uh, are quite... Uh, entranced with each other. This is a lovely little story. Robert McClowski really tells um, awesome stories about kids and uh, the rural way of life. He has another one um, that's about, he has several that are more about Maine, but the other one that you may have heard of is um, One Morning in Maine. It's very popular and I don't have a copy of that one here, but that's also one that was really, um, really part of my childhood. You know, I really love that book. The next author I'd like to talk about is E.B. White. E.B. White had, um, again, was a born outside of the state of Maine. He was born in New York and then moved to um, Maine as an adult and lived in the uh, on the Blue Hill Peninsula. And this, of course, book, Charlotte's Web, is his most famous, probably, book. And I do love Charlotte's Web, um, but my favorite book by this author is... And this isn't a great copy, but it's Trumpet of the Swan. Uh, I think you can see that there. Trumpet of the Swan um, is a lovely little quiet book um, all about 
basically a young boy and a swan um, and this little pond that's on their property and it's so lovely and such a beautiful book about nature and finding your own place in the world. Uh, I just absolutely loved it. So I would highly recommend uh, both Robert McCloskey and E.B. White to you. The next book I'd like to talk about is a book that's not specifically by a Maine author, but it's a tale that takes place in Maine. And that's Lost on a Mountain in Maine. This is a true story. The author is Don Fendler. He actually tells this story to Joseph Egan in this original nonfiction book. And it's all about a 12-year-old boy who with his family is hiking Mount Katahdin. Mount Katahdin is the tallest mountain in Maine. And um, he is on this hike with his family and they sort of are in two groups with one group up ahead on the trail and one group further behind on the trail. And he, as he tries to move between the two groups, gets off the trail, falls down an embankment and they can't find him. The fog has rolled in, they can't find him. And he has unfortunately fallen down um, an embankment on the side of the mountain that is in the wilderness, not the side of the mountain where the trails lead to the parking areas and all of that. And he is lost for almost two weeks in the Maine wilderness with his family and other, um, you know, searchers looking for him. And they, you know, most everyone believes that he has died um, after this period. But he comes out, um, he finds his way out to a lake and a camp owner on that lake sees him and they get him back into civilization. This story was first read to me when I was in elementary school um, during a unit on Maine history. And I have read it over and over again. I've read it to my children. Um, and now we have a graphic novel that's based on the same story. This is called Lost Trail, The True Story, Nine Days Alone in the Wilderness by Don Fenler. And um, he, he was helped in writing this by Lynn Plurd, who is a Maine author. And this is illustrated by Ben Bishop. And this is a wonderful graphic. It's actually a graphic memoir about his time spent lost um, in the woods. Don Fenlon was actually a Boy Scout and he used some of the things that he had learned as a Boy Scout to help him survive. But it certainly was a harrowing experience and it has very much impacted my entire life reading this book. So highly recommend that as well. The next author I'd like to talk about is an author of historical fiction. This is Arundel by Kenneth Roberts. Kenneth Roberts is quite a famous main author of historical fiction. I'm just going to show this map. So Arundel, which is one of his more famous works, is historical fiction about a group of colonial Americans who travel with Benedict Arnold through the wilderness from the coast of Maine up the Kennebunk River and through um, basically uncharted territory, trying to get into Quebec to attack the British. This happens in 1775. This is an amazing adventure story. I think I read this for the first time in like seventh grade or something. And it's just such a fascinating adventure story. Of It's a story of survival in the wilderness. They get lost in sort of these swamps um, between Maine, what is now Maine, and what is now Quebec. And they just are in there for just so much time trying to find their way out and off into a place where they can fight the British. Now, Kenneth Roberts has written um, quite a few other books that uh, are also historical and um, and this book doesn't have them listed in it, of course, but there's quite a few other ones. And if you like historical fiction, um, I think Kenneth Roberts is a great place to start, especially if you're looking for a little bit more main history. Now, the next uh, is an author pair that I'd like to talk about. And this is kind of getting into more genre fiction. And that is Sharon Lee and Steve Miller. Sharon Lee and Steve Miller are partners who live in Maine and they write um, science fiction. Mostly it takes place in this Leiden universe. Um, this is a bind up called Partners in Necessity and it actually has three um, novels within it. Um, and so the Leiden universe is great if you like space opera, if you like some romance in your science fiction, um, if you like sort of comedy of manners type um, science fiction. These are great stories. There's talking turtle type aliens. Um, there, 
They are the best characters, honest to God, the talking turtles. I love them. And each pair of characters that you meet in each book, you just fall in love with. And of course, they're all connected um, through family um, and through clan, basically. And if you like space opera along the lines of Lois McMaster Bujold's The Corsican series, I think you would love the Leaden universe. Um, and there's several books within that same series. I have read and reread and reread the Leaden Universe novels. I just love them, um, and I think they're fantastic. So I would definitely recommend that if you're interested in sci-fi from Maine. Um, for some nonfiction, I have uh, I want to tell you about an author called um, Kate Braystrip. Kate Braystrip um, wrote the first book she wrote is Here If You Need Me, a true story. When uh, Kate was a young, newly married um, person, her husband was a state police officer. He was unexpectedly killed, and she has to learn how to go on from there. She actually um, follows her dream to go to a uh, religious uh, seminary, I believe, and become a minister. Um, and it's all about her relationship with religion, how she... Um, deals with the loss of her husband at such a young age and uh, all of that sort of thing. It's absolutely beautifully written, really heartwarming, really, it felt very realistic. It felt very true to life. Kate Braystrip is a person that you can see yourself sitting down with and having some coffee. She's really awesome. And then she followed that up with another memoir, Marriage and Other Acts of Charity. So after um, Kate becomes a minister, she gets hired by the main warden service to become the chaplain for the warden service. And this is all about um, her life as a chaplain for the warden service. The main warden service is the law enforcement agency that, um, who is tasked with the job of enforcing wildlife laws and hunting and fishing laws. And they are also generally the agency that's first on the scene if anybody's lost in the wilderness. Um, so you can understand how um, a chaplain would be very needed in some of those situations. And some of those stories are told in here. She's talks, talking about um, marriage relationships, family relationships, um, her connection um, with those things and her religious, uh, her religious faith and how that plays into it. And just being a chaplain for the warden service. Um, fascinating. She's just such a great writer. If you like memoirs, if you're interested in um, sort of how a person deals with grief after the loss of a loved one, and she gets remarried in this book, so it's all about dealing with a second marriage and how, how that connects with her work as a chaplain for the warden service. Just excellent, excellent books. Highly recommend those. And then I have a mystery writer to recommend. And that is Sarah Graves. Sarah Graves is the pen name for a writer who lives in Eastport, Maine. Eastport is um, very near to where I live, on Copscoe Bay. And Sarah Graves um, writes these, basically a cozy mystery series. It's called Home Repair is Homicide. This is um, a later edition in, in that series. Um, and we're following the main character, Jake Triptree, who used to be a... Um, stockbroker or type person in uh, in New York City and gets somehow sort of is sideswiped in uh, a situation involving the mob and decides that she's done with that kind of life, moves to Maine, finds an old house in Eastport and sets to work um, repairing said old house. So these mysteries, there's a mystery to solve in every um, in every episode or every novel in the series and in the meantime or interspersed throughout are these home repair tips as Jake tries to repair her a uh, her old Victorian house um, in Eastport, Maine. The, what I love about this book is the sense of place here. Um, Graves does a wonderful job capturing the sort of feel of Eastport and the, the supporting cast is a huge supporting cast as this series goes on of sort of the locals in Eastport, right? There's a police detective, there's a, you know, the, the garage guy, the guy that repairs cars, there's restaurant people, Jake finds a boyfriend. 
And I felt like I knew those people. <laughs> very well characterized, very much the kind of people you would you would meet if you came to this area of Maine. Um, they very much embody the characteristics of a down easter. Um, so I really enjoy this series. I think it's really fun. And if you like cozy mysteries, I think you um, should give this a try. Now, Sarah Graves has also started a second series, and this is the Lizzie, what is her name? Lizzie Snow, the Lizzie Snow series. And these books are a little bit more hardcore. Um, these are, uh, Lizzie Snow is a, she was a detective in the Boston area. Um, her little sister gets kidnapped and is never found. And so Lizzie sort of takes a job in Northern Maine and um, as she's hoping to find out more about what's happened to her little sister. And uh, so she becomes a, like a deputy sheriff, I think, in a small Northern Maine town. So this book, this series actually takes place um, more up in uh, Aroostook County, um, which is the county north of us and sort of the county at the top of Maine. Um, but again, I think uh, Graves does a great job of capturing the feel and the people, the sorts of people that live in those areas, those small towns in Northern Maine. Um, and if you like your mysteries a little bit more hard boiled with a little bit more blood and gore, um, I think the Lizzie Snow series is a little bit, you know, a little bit rougher and you might enjoy them. And then of course, any conversation about Maine authors and I know, and I'm sorry, Laura, but I have to mention Stephen King. I mean, everybody knows Stephen King. I don't have to convince you if you, you either like Stephen King or you don't, right? He's a great writer. I love him. He's one of my favorite writers because he can tell a great story. Many, many, many of his stories take place in the state of Maine. Um, this is one of his early ones. This is Cujo, the story of the rabid dog. This takes place in the fictional town of Castle Rock, Maine, where many of King's novels are set. Um, and, uh, you know, just always a great sense of atmosphere, a very realistic look at small Maine towns. Um, and his characters are always awesome and great. They're, you know, I just love them. He just can tell a good story. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you that these are great literature, but I think they're ripping good time. So... I had to mention Stephen King, even though he's had plenty of exposure and doesn't need any more from me. So those are some authors that I love who either are from Maine or who write about Maine. I hope that you found something in there to interest you. I'm going to write, of course, all of the titles down below in the description box so that you can go back and refer to them if there's anything there that you'd like to uh, look at a little bit more closely. Um, please feel free to ask any questions about any of them down below or any questions that you might have about Maine where I live. I'll try to answer them. Um, and I hope that you are all doing well and finding some great books to read and I will talk to you later.